o la Florida. Introducing Boricua Beer and Taino Light Beer. Boricua and Taino Light are crafted beers that are rich in flavors and brewed right here in Florida. Taino Beer has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean flavor style when enjoyed shield. Boricua Beer is a craft L with full body flavor that is a beer drinker's beer. Boricua and Taino Light Beers, enjoy responsibly. Good evening, welcome to another edition of EDU TV. I'm your host, Greg Perkins, and we are here today with Miss Joanna Rodriguez. Hi, Greg. She is the president and school director <laughs> for the Bilingual and Christian Academy in Technology. Thanks, Congratulations. Greg. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> yes, and folks, today is Joanna's birthday. That was supposed to be a secret. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> You can't tell the age though. Let's leave that out. <laughs> oh, please. You look great. You look great. Okay, you you were a teacher, right? Yes. And you started a school. So tell me about that transition. How that happened? So you 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 were a teacher teaching kids and now you ventured off to begin your own school. Yes, I've been here several times um, talking about shelter instruction, which what yes. I it's basically what I used to do. I've been a teacher for 12 years and after talking to my husband several times about the situations that are happening in the public education system, um, we've decided that we needed to do something. We needed to do something for the very little And, and what are those situations that kind of inspired you? Like, um, I've been not fighting, but I've been advocating for the sure. ESL students. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that they come in from out of state and they have to take an assessment even when they do not speak the language, an assessment that is not written, not even in their language, even when they're just right. supposed to be testing skills, not language itself, along, among other things like, um, you know, religion has to be separate from Bible, but I do believe that there are values that you can only integrate or incorporate in their education when you talk about the actual, you know, part of religion. So right. that's why we decided to go for a bilingual to mm -hmm. cover that part of the language program. Christian, because there are values that our families need in order to improve our society situation. Because if we work with the family, society will be covered, you know? Right. And that's why it's Christian and it's technology because of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, and your school is going to be located in, in Osceola, which yes. we're, really would serve a need, right? Because you have a, a big influx of yes. people. Mm -hmm. that are coming from Puerto Rico to Osceola. Yes, um, basically because of the economical situation of Puerto Rico, more among other things. But yes, there is a big, a, a big amount of students coming in every, every single week. So it's something that it was needed. You can see many Christian academies in the area. However, none of them is bilingual. Oh, okay. So again, we go back to the same situation we're having in the public school. I mean, there are services that are not offered to kids that are non-English speakers. So. Right, or not enough of them, oh, no, right? No, exactly. Because a kid may just have one class per day exactly. where he's getting ESL services. Exactly. Where within your school, he can get those services because one of the things that they, they started to look at in Florida was that the kid may be smart in his native language. Exactly. But when you come here and you don't know how to speak English as well, you're not going to do well. Not because you're not smart. Exactly. You just don't know the language. You just don't know the language. And, and sometimes they even know the answer and they understand it because like in Puerto Rico, they teach English from kindergarten to 12th grade. Okay. So they tend to understand. They can read it. It's just that they cannot speak it. You know, it's a process. It takes around, sure. around seven years for them to basically learn the language the way it should be right but they, they go through stages and those first stages are reading and understanding when they cannot express it if the teacher is not bilingual if right. they don't provide that flexibility then they would just hold back and they don't practice they don't dare to try while if we're doing this in a bilingual environment they will feel free at the beginning they will just speak on their main language but then eventually they will get used to it and then they will start using the second language that we're teaching them. 
Okay, and so uh, your school, mm -hmm. okay, will be used to help fill that gap. So, yes. so tell me how are you going to do that? Like, how, how are you going to do it better than the uh, public school? Because you're a private school, right? <laughs> yes, we are a private school. Okay. Yes, we're a private school. However, there are scholarships now with the um, school choice. Parents have the choice of, you know, selecting private schools and applying for scholarships like Triple A, McKay, and Step Up. And they so they can use some of those dollars to attend your school? Yes, and they okay. will pay them. They will pay everything for the student to go to a private school. It's just that parents don't know about it. Actually, my website, I have a link um, and what's your website? for those scholarships. What's your website? It's BCAT School, B as in boy, mm -hmm. C A T mm -hmm. School.com. Okay. If you go in there, you'll find the links and you can learn a little bit more about scholarship. It doesn't have to be to my school, to Bilingual right. Christian Academy and Technology. You can use those. To any to go to any private school here in Florida, in Osceola County, at least. Yeah, but a lot of parents, like you say, if they hear the word private, they'll say, "Oh, I can't afford that." Exactly. But what you're saying, uh, parents, is that there are actual actually scholarships uh, that are out there that you can apply exactly. for that will help you pay for a private school education. Exactly. So and it's affordable for everybody. Right. It w which would greatly benefit a lot of the people who come over from the island. Exactly. Because the American education system, man, it's, it can be overwhelming, even yes. for kids who speak English. Yes. I yes. mean, it, it's not a joke. I, you just I go at, to the numbers. You'll see yeah. that the FSA, um, not only the ESL students do not pass the FSA, native English that's uh, right. speakers. That's right. no. So then it's, that's when you need to ask yourself, then what's going on? I mean, actually, we know that that test was not well, designed pretty, for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a pretty rigorous test. And so kids yes. have to, you have to be a solid Definitely. student who's taking education seriously Definitely. in order to do well on those tests. And you were asking me about how can we help them better. Well, it's just that we've been, my master's degree is in curriculum design, so I've been okay. looking over for a curriculum that will definitely provide for all kind of students, students with um, learning disabilities, students that are definitely excessively good, and sometimes they stay in that classroom bored to that because they're, they've been held back because of the rest of the class, and for regular students. So I found this new exciting curriculum, okay. which is um, Alpha and Omega. It's called Ignisha. Okay. It's mostly digital, but it provides a lot of media in it. It provides um, games. It provides tutoring. It provides everything in it. Plus, you, the student will have a teacher next to them to clarify, to explain, you know, to give them extra help in whichever area they're working on. Right. Now, the program allows them to go at their own pace. Oh, okay. So, at the same time, I can monitor as a teacher, and parents at home can monitor what's going on, the due dates. So they have access but to the exactly, kids' stuff online. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So it's, um, it's like a team working together to help that kid success, succeed. And that kid feels like, you know, this is my responsibility, this is my office, I'm working for me now. And that, that sense of... of Power oh, or ownership, ownership. Yeah, they're taking ownership basically, for exactly, curriculum, yeah. usually motivates them to do better. Right, right, because kids, when you sort of give them something to do, I was, uh, I don't know if I was, saw it on the show or reading it in a book, and they said, you know, kids want to explore. Exactly. And a lot of times we, we hold kids back. We hold them back. So it sounds like you're using a blended learning approach. Exactly, we Okay, are. so for parents, and for the general public who may not know what blended learning is, if you can kind of tell, because your curriculum, you're going to be, the, the kids are going to work at their own pace yes. with the digital curriculum. Mm -hmm. However, there will be a teacher there to facilitate the learning. Supervising, so talk a little bit more about that. The yes. teacher will be supervising, facilitating, clarifying doubts. At the same time, the student mm -hmm. has this extra, um, extra links or, or research projects that if they truly like this theme or this topic, they can keep on researching on that, but it will be controlled by the system and by the teacher as well. I mean, it's, it's like they think that they have um, power over everything they access, and that gives them that ownership, but at the same time, they've been supervised, right. they've been helped, they've been contained okay. to what we want them to learn. Mm -hmm. So, believe me, it's the best um, it's the best computer program designed for Christian schools. Right. But it's that special care yes. that you're going to give them to uh, help them to be successful. Now, 
what would you, what are your tests going to look like in comparison to the uh, public school uh, education? Because they have the FSA, and private schools don't have to do that. So you have your own set of assessments and stuff. They that don't have to do the FSA. However, we all want. I mean, I am pretty sure that if. I have administrators watching right now from private school. We want our kids to be prepared not only for the FSA, but for everything. Right. So yes, we use standardized assessments. In this case, we're going to be using Iowa assessment. Right. Um, the thing is that the ki we're not teaching for a test, which is yeah, what, we, right. what I used to do right. in a school. I was forced, basically, to teach for a test. Right. No, what we're doing is that we're teaching them for life. We're giving right. them the skills they will need. And then we will assess those skills through Iowa assessment. Right. But they they do not everything does not rely on that on that test. Now not only that, talking about the education and the curriculum we're giving, we have over forty different CTE courses, which What's are CTE? Um, CTE. which are um, technical education courses. Okay. So if they know what they want to study when they come out of school, they can start it from mm -hmm. high school here in, in our private school. We also have over 30 different um, electives, plus the core classes. And on top of that, we're going to be using um, art, because you know that art is a very strong tool when we're trying to improve skills in students. So we're right. going to be using art. I'm going to be having Jose Viles. If you go to jdbcreations.com, you're going to be able to see him. He's an internationally known artist, and he's going to be teaching in our school. We're going to be giving them skills that they can use when they come out of school. So not all of them are going to be Einstein's. We know that, but we still, they still. They, but you can be still. Einstein in whatever you do. Exactly. Because you talked about the CTE. I mean, you may have a kid who comes up with some type of design. Exactly. So not Einstein in the traditional sense, because I understand he wasn't re a really good student himself. <laughs> he was just a really exactly. good, That's a real, a very smart person. And even somebody like uh -huh. Steve Jobs. But uh, meaning that not all of them will want right, to go to college. To college, right, and right. sometimes we, we have this misunderstanding that if they don't go to college, something's wrong. No, we just need to provide them tools so they can do what they love and what they like. And that's what we're going to be providing with the art class and with the chess club and things like that. They will have extra tools to use whenever they go out there. They'll be ready to do whatever right. they want. Right. So it sounds like your school is just going to be more than just a kid of sitting course. down, of course. reading a book, and taking a test. Of course. He'll definitely. have some chances to do some exploration about what is it that he wants to do in life. Plus, him or her. we are reinforcing values, which is what we're losing right now in public schools. Give me an example of that when you say reinforcing values. Reinforcing value, the value of family. Sometimes mm -hmm. we want to change the concept of family. We want to add extras to it. I want them to see it through the Bible. Mm -hmm. I want them to see examples they can follow because it's not the same for me to tell you how valuable your family is. And when I come to you and show you studies and, and um, how this concept can help you develop your own family eventually in life. How about love, being loved? How about treating others with respect the way you want the them to treat you? Exactly. Yes, right. So we want them to be exposed to all those things so our society will be better eventually. If we start working with our kids on that, eventually we'll go back to the way we're supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, there's a big push now to, to get families in communities more involved in educating the entire yes. child. Because we've lost that, we've lost that. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what happened. I mean, it's society's become so complex, right? Yes, definitely. And it's, it's, and, and so a lot of kids, if they don't have guidance at home, in a lot of cases, the school and has to teach the Then everybody says we need to do something. Society is getting crazy, but then we need to move. We need to start doing something, and we decided to start it by. Um, beginning this school, starting this school, Bilingual Christian Academy and Technology. So what does a parent need to do to uh, sign his or her child up for well, school? Well, if you would like more information about this, I'll suggest you go to our website, which is B, as in boy, cat, C-A-T, school.com, or they can always call us to 407 530 mm -hmm. Four two two seven, and we'll be more than welcome to help you even to fill out the scholarship if you need help on that or any other information you might need. We're there to help you. Okay, uh, folks, so that will conclude this session. So, yes, uh, please uh, check Joanna out. That's the Bilingual Christian Academy and Technology. Uh, congratulations. Thank you, and again, Greg. happy birthday <laughs> and good luck with the school. Awesome. Thank you. We'll see you on the other side, folks. I am for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her, and her mother, 
her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll free 866-341-1425. Good evening. Welcome to another edition of EDU TV. I am your host, Greg Perkins. Before we um, have our interview with the, uh, our guest on the second uh, segment, Ms. Joanna Rodriguez, who just started a private school, I just wanted to discuss a few things with the educational community, okay? We try to uh, make sure that you are informed. I've had something on my, my mind that I want to talk to people about, right? Tomorrow, they are having a meeting in St. Augustine, Florida. There's basically a rule, actually it's kind of been around, that the state will no longer allow schools to be D and F schools. You cannot make a D or an F because when you do that, you are failing the kids. When the kids fail, they will one day be young adults and ultimately adults. And if they don't learn anything while they are in school, then that's gonna create some problems. Okay, so that leads me to ask this question. What is the purpose of an education? Hmm, that's a tough question and no one can really answer that, all right? Uh, I think the purpose of an education is number one, we wanna keep a civilized society because if we weren't educated and if we didn't think critically through some of the things that we do, the entire United States would end up looking like Chicago, okay? And we don't want that. Also, the purpose of an education is that one day when the kids become an adult, they're gonna have to get a job, all right? And some of the jobs, they're gonna require that you know certain things, okay? It doesn't require that you know everything, but it does, it, the, the jobs are going to require that those kids be able to perform certain tasks, right? You have to sell products, you have to know how to count, you, you just have to do these basic things. Okay, so there's a big debate going on in education about standardized testing and the importance of standardized testing. I see the pros and I see the cons against standardized testing. Uh, recently, as recent as I think Monday, they had a big thing where these parents with the opt-out movement, they told their kids, hey, you don't have to take the test. Well, these were pretty bright kids. They were A and B students. So the districts held them back because the state rule says you have to take this test. So I don't know if that is um, uh, the answer, but one thing I do like about what the state is doing, it's actually, and you guys should, it's pretty boring stuff. Most people consider this type of stuff boring, but I think it's pretty important, right? So the superintendents, any of their schools that have made like D's or F's for two consecutive years, they have to go before the board, the State Board of Education. State Board of Education is made up of mostly business people. All right, these guys, they own business. Some of them are multimillionaires, right? So they understand profit. And I'm not saying schools should be run like profit, but what they're asking the superintendents to do, they're saying, hey, why is this school making a D? Why is this school making an F? If the principal, in one case, right, and I'm not gonna say which district, in one case, they sent a the principal to a school. The school was a D. The school then became an F. So when the superintendents presented their plan to say this guy's gonna turn around the school, some of the business people on the panel said, hey, the school was a D and he took it to an F and he's still there, right? Why is this guy still here? I have no confidence that this guy's gonna be able to turn this uh, school around. Now, who's to blame? I don't know, they say the parents are the blame. But you know what guys? Once those kids come to school, they're your responsibility, right? And I know teachers work very, 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 very hard, okay? So in some cases, I know teachers, they have to, uh, good teachers work after the school day and they even work on weekends. So now there's uh, a shortage of teachers. I mean, right before the beginning of the school year, Orange County had a shortage of about 300 teachers. Think about that. That's 300 teachers, right? And most teachers teach about, uh, depend, I guess if you're in middle school, high school, they teach about 100 kids a day. So that's a lot of kids being impacted for a period of time, or in some cases, they may not ever feel that. So what does that kid do for that entire year, okay? 
And we know that kids learn best when they're at the lower grades. So the big thing I wanted to talk about though, teaching to the test, okay? I had a debate with two teachers. They said, oh, you can't teach to the test. The kids aren't gonna learn anything. All right, folks, here's the deal. The state legislators, they have mandated that the kids pass this test. Is it right or wrong? I don't know, okay? But I am telling you, it's the law. So if the state tells you, hey, we want you to pass this test. We want you to pass the FSA. And then teachers go, oh, I'm not gonna teach you the test. Okay, people are being fired now. Principals are being fired. Uh, teachers are being fired, having to relocate, okay? So they're giving you a target to hit. They're saying, here are the things we want you to teach the kids. If they're telling you what to teach, why would you go off and teach your own curriculum? Why would you do that? They're telling you what to teach. And here's something even more uh, uh, crazy. Watch these numbers, right? There are 180 days in a school year. And when the kids take the FSA reading test and math test, each one of those tests are about an hour and a half long, okay? Folks, guess how many questions on each test? 60 questions. Let's just call it, to break it even, I think it's like uh, 60 to 64. But we're gonna call it even. They're saying we're gonna give your kids an hour and a half to pass reading tests. We're gonna give your kids an hour and a half to pass math tests. 60 questions. What they are saying is that all you have to do to show that you are a good school is to have your kids pass these two one and a half hour tests. And we're gonna give you 180 days to do it. Are you kidding me? Do you know how much money is being spent? Billions of dollars for two 60 question tests. I'm not a math guy, but if you're sitting at home, I want you to divide 60 by 1 billion and see how much each test, test question costs, okay? Now, teaching to the test, is that a bad thing? I don't know. Our world is full of tests. If you wanna be a fireman, you gotta take a test. If you wanna be a nurse, you gotta take a test. If you wanna be a truck driver, you gotta take a test. If you wanna be a teacher, you gotta take a test, all right? So is it a game? I don't know, but I do know what they're saying that if you pass this test, then you can have these things, all right? Some kids become so good at taking tests, they can actually earn money in the form of scholarships. So my question is, is teaching to the test a bad thing, okay? In preparing for a test, folks, you will actually learn something because you have to read the material, right? So whatever you read, whatever you read, you are going to learn that information. If the FSA says, hey, you gotta read four passages, you know what I'm gonna do? What we're gonna do every day, we're gonna read passages, we're gonna answer questions, we are going to write essays uh, and challenge and have discussions challenging the kids to think critically. So by the time that they get to that test, they would have read so many passages, they would be accustomed to doing it. Same thing with math. All you need to do is focus on the 60 questions that you are going to be testing on. And the state does not hide this information. They tell you what they're gonna test the kids on. They dare you to pass it. Have any of you guys ever gone to, and again, I know this is boring, I've done it. If you go to the Florida Department uh, uh, of Education's website, they tell you exactly what standards the kids are going to be testing on. They kind of tell you, and with any uh, test folks, I don't care how complicated they try to make it, all tests have a pattern, okay? When the kids have to answer certain questions, you know right away you can start to eliminate uh, 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 certain questions. So once that kid learns how to take a test, let's just say in the third grade. So now he's gonna be a good test taker in the fifth grade. He's gonna be a good test taker in eighth grade. He's gonna do well on the ACT and SAT because now you've taught that kid how to navigate through tests, right? I know a young lady right now, she's at Harvard. She would not have gotten into Harvard if she had not prepared to take that test. I said, how did you do that? She said, you know what I did, Ms. Perkins? I got like two books and I just kept taking these tests. And every time I would take a test, I would like, the ones I would get wrong, I would go back 
and I would correct them. And she said, I had two books and all these tests. And you know what? She went to Harvard and she did an intern last year. This girl's like 19 years old. Her first internship, the girl was being flown from, let's see, Washington DC to stay in New York every week, okay? Every week, the company was paying for it, right? And they could choose any hotel as long as it wasn't over like five or $600 a night, which is nothing in New York, but that's still a pretty nice hotel, okay? This is what her test scores got her. They, number one, they got her into Harvard, right? Number two, it got her an intern with a very cons uh, a fancy consulting group out of uh, Boston, okay? Right, so her job paid her $6,000 a month, 19 years old, $6,000 a month, and they gave her a corporate credit card card and told them that they could uh, eat at four or five star restaurants as long as they didn't go crazy. This is what learning how to pass a test can get you. Um, I also know of another guy, and, I, and I'm kind of against this, because a lot of times when you go to work for a company, they're gonna kind of teach you that way, but do you know that some companies will test your aptitude, whatever the heck that is, try to tell that to somebody like Jay-Z, right? Or, or uh, what's the other guy's name who did the uh, biggest deal in Apple? Um, Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre. These guys did not go to college, but they learned their craft. But what I am telling you, unless you buy in somewhat to teaching these kids how to effectively pass this 60 question math test, this 60 question reading test, we're gonna continue to have these issues in um, education. You don't want your school labeled a D or an F. We know that there are good, they're not, those aren't D and F teachers. I, I, I get that, I support teachers, right? And those are not D and F kids, all right? So let's help them. Let's pass the test. Go on the Florida Department of Education website. They tell you what standards are gonna be tested and there are only 60. There are only 60 questions on the math. I keep repeating this. 60 on the math, 60 on the reading. People, you can do it. All right, now if you really wanna know how to do it, you gotta call me at 407-376-4324 and I come out and have this talk at your school. All right, so I understand philosophically, right? Oh, and by the way, NFL and NBA, you ever heard of the combines? These are world-class athletes and they still make these guys prove themselves. So don't be afraid of the test, embrace the test, right? Because there was a time when there would just be some teachers that would just come into the classroom and they would just chill, right? And you would just play like, you would like play tiddlywinks or, or whatever you did all day and you wouldn't learn anything. So at least the test can give you some idea of which teachers are slacking and which teachers are getting at it. So I would like to ask you, is teaching to the test such a bad thing? I don't think so. Because anytime I've prepared for a test, I've actually learned something. And you have 180 days. I think the kids take the test right at about maybe 100 days. So that leaves you with about 80 days where the kids can have lots and lots of fun. But until then, let's not do the kids a disservice by saying, oh, we're not gonna teach you the test because philosophically, yeah, whatever, man. All right, kids, learn how to take the test. You can get scholarships. You can get money, all right? Okay, and you're gonna be tested the rest of your life anyway, all right, when you become a doctor, right? So, we're gonna wrap this up, thank you. for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her. And her mother, her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll free 866-341-1425.
Hola Florida, introducing Boricua Beer and Taino Light Beer. Boricua and Taino Light are crafted beers that are rich in flavors and brewed right here in Florida. Taino Beer has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean flavor style when enjoyed chilled. Boricua Beer is a craft ale with full body flavor that is a beer drinker's beer. Boricua and Taino Light Beers, enjoy responsibly. 